So welcome to another one of my videos on gravity fed oil stoves. I made one video that uh, got a lot of views and comments about the famous regulator or the carburetor. Uh, so this is the, uh, the right place for that. If you have questions on how to adjust it, anything that has to do with the regulator, the parts, how it works, uh, you are at the right place. I am no expert. Uh, this is just for entertainment purposes only. I've looked through a bunch of manuals, including Napoleon and Yukon stoves. I did the research for you guys and found some nice pictures. We'll go through all that. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand a little better and maybe even adjust yours if you feel confident. If this video helps you, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell icon because when I put out more videos, you'll get notified. Let's jump right into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with a quick overview on how these uh, stoves work. And then we're gonna focus mainly on the carburetor um, or the regulator as, as some of the, these manuals call it. So we're gonna look at the external parts, uh, how it works inside so you have a better understanding, how to adjust it, and how to clean the filter, which is probably the most important thing to do. So let's just start right off with the, uh, with the quick overview. These things are pretty simple. Uh, gravity fed oil stoves, you have some kind of oil tank, which is minimum 12 inches higher than the regulator. So you can see in this picture here, uh, it shows that 12 inches minimum. Typically you will have one shut off valve. It's a good idea to have a filter on the line as well before it reaches the regulator. And then the magic happens in this, in this box here where the red arrow points. That's the, the focus of the video. And then it slowly drips the oil into your stove and you have a nice heat for your cabin, house, basement, uh, whatever, right? So the external parts. Now we're gonna dive into this, uh, into this carburetor and talk about it a little more. So at the top here, we have the control knob. So that's where the user inputs uh, from setting Typically it's from one to six that I've seen on these regulators. Usually you have a big rod on this part, which goes to the top of the stove uh, with the same numbers, one to six. That's uh, just more user friendly that way since these regulators are situated at the bottom of the stoves. Next, we have the low fire adjustment screw. This is one of the ways to adjust the flame. Uh, we're gonna talk about it later on. Some are painted red. Um, there's a little arrow indicated on the top plate with a little description, so it kind of helps. If you don't have this video, just refer to the top plate. Next, we have the data plate, data plate with the year, manufacturer, all that stuff. Not too important to us. It's kind of neat to see though when your uh, regulator is about 50 or 60 years old. You know, these things, if they're cleaned, uh, they work, they work like a charm, right? So there's nothing electronic on these. Um, actually, these stoves can run without electricity. The only reason you would need electricity, kind of a side note here, is if you have your oil tank, which is below your stove. So you would need a pump to bring the oil upstream. Or if you had a blower fan, obviously that would be probably electric, uh, just to distribute the heat a little better. Next, we have the arming lever. When it's uh, pulled up, it means the flow in the regulator will stop. When it's pushed down, uh, the oil or the flow um, is activated. So it's like an on and off switch. At the bottom here, we see the filter access plate. All you need is a flathead screwdriver. There's two screws there. You unscrew it and you have access to the filter. We'll talk about that later. On the side of the regulator or the carburetor, you will usually see a oil level. Uh, again, it is very important for these stoves to be level uh, because there's two floats inside and it relies on, on that. Over here beside the control knob, so you can see that long arrow that points up, there's an actuator pin. So this pin goes in and out or up and down. Uh, this here we're gonna ignore for the video, but essentially what it's used for is for a thermostat. Uh, if you have this connected to some kind of thermostat, um, it'll regulate the flow with this pin. And finally, we have the high fire adjustment screw. Again, we're gonna talk about this a little later, but that is the, that's the other way to adjust the flame on these regulators. 
So I hope that kind of made more sense for those who <clears throat> haven't really dove into these parts before. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comment below. We're gonna jump into the uh, internal parts of a carburetor. Now, before I carry on, it's kind of funny that some of these manuals call it a carburetor because typically a carburetor is where you see a mixture of air and fuel, but in these stoves here, it is just uh, fuel or oil. So. That's why some call it the regulator, some the carburetor. It's, uh, the choice of the manufacturer, I guess. So I found this diagram from one of these manuals. Uh, it's kind of pixelated, hard to see, pretty old school since these stoves are pretty old. Um, it's a good reference though. You can see the filter here, uh, E or echo. You see the filter pulled out. You see the two floats. So that's the main idea behind these. What I did for you guys is I created a cross section for some colors. Hopefully it makes sense. So again, it's a cross section. We see the knob at the top, which we've, we, which we've talked about. We see the uh, arming lever here and the filter port. These arrows in greenish gray uh, represent the oil. So this is how it works. The oil comes in through the, uh, through the inlet, which is probably a copper pipe here. It goes through the filter. Um, it then goes up through the stem here. So with this right here, is representing oil. And then there is this float. So this is your main float. When the oil is lower, let's say your uh, carburetor is turned off, your float will be probably touching the bottom because it's empty, right? As soon as you uh, arm the uh, carburetor with this arming lever right on the left, it's gonna let oil flow in. That float is gonna go up. And as soon as it get, reaches the, uh, like a top point, it's gonna shut off the flow of oil. On the right here, you see a secondary float. If the oil flow is too fast, it's gonna go over this little wall here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my little oil back here. So if it goes over this wall, let's say this oil goes up like this, right? It's overflowing now. And then it starts flowing into the, into the uh, chamber on the right. What's gonna happen is this float here is gonna go up, right? It's gonna go up like this, and it's gonna cause this lever here, it's, it's one solid piece, to trip this arming and disarming lever, right? So it's kind of like an emergency shutoff. So most of these oil stoves are equipped with this in the regulator. Um, it's very good to have because if, let's say the oil flows too fast, let's say your main float gets stuck here or something, uh, if there's a foreign object in this chamber, um, this overflow safety will shut off your stove and it'll deplete the flame. It, it's a good feature to have. Now, how does the oil get into the stove? So attached to the control knob here is this long black stem here, right? So this is in that main chamber. What happens, this is my little animation I made for you guys, but what happens when you put your control knob on zero, so pretty much when it's off. This gate is gonna be closed, okay? So let's say you put it on setting number one. It's gonna go up and there's a little slot in here. It's like a little slit and the oil will start to flow through it and go into the stove. Let's say we put it on setting two, that slit is gonna open up even more. More oil is gonna flow, causing a bigger flame. If you put on three, four, five, and six to the max, this slit is gonna open up like this. So you can see that's how this system controls the flow of oil. So again, when it's closed, you don't see the slit, no oil flows in, the float will stop bringing in oil into the regulator once you know the float reaches that, that certain height. And then when you turn the knob at the top, that's, that's pretty much what happens. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it's like a little gate valve or some kind of valve, right? Setting zero is closed, setting six, it opens right up. So the way to adjust these regulators is pretty much controlling how high and low this, this little gate goes, right? Um, that's pretty much the premise behind it. Very simple system. Um, as long as you keep those top plates on your regulators, don't try and get in there too much because if you do that, foreign objects can go in. It could jam some of these, uh, some of these parts, floats, uh, etc. So it pretty much works like a toilet. 
when you flush, you know, there's a float. When it reaches a certain point, it stops the flow of water into the bowl. That's pretty much how this works with an emergency overflow. So we're gonna get into the adjustments. This part here is probably the part I spent the most time when I got my first ice shack because I didn't even go off of manuals. I just kind of guessed. I really hope this helps you because for me, it took me a while to figure it out and I wasted a lot of time on this. So the biggest thing to note is when you do any kind of adjustments on these stoves is you always want to have the stove running for at least 15 minutes before adjusting anything. These stoves have to be hot before you do any changes because um, there's a time delay, right? So in a lot of the manuals, they say for every change you make on the control knob, you have to wait five minutes. So you don't want to go from one all the way to six right away. Um, you don't want to go, uh, you know, from six all the way to one. You kind of want to do it in steps. The oil flow setting is done by the manufacturer typically and normally doesn't require any adjustments. So if the burner fails to respond to the knob settings, other possible causes should be checked first. So the chimney draft, if you know nothing about that, no problem. I have another video on that. Uh, it could be a dirty filter or the oil supply line. So make sure the oil reaches the regulator before trying to do any changes on it. First thing we wanna talk about for any adjustments on these stoves is the minimum adjustment speed. So what that means is when we set the knob to one. So first of all, you have your stove running for at least 15 minutes, and then you set your knob to one, to the one setting, which is the lowest. For an ideal flame, you want it to cover the bottom of your burning pot. Um, the first metal ring in there should be uh, glowing red. If your flame is too small, the oil stove will quickly suit up. So it'll cause a lot of internal smoke and cover your glass in that dirty stuff, right? So you'll have a hard time seeing through and your glass will no longer be clear. So that's what we were talking about when we, you get soot in your stove. So this is where you do your first adjustment. I'm gonna have a picture of the top plate from the view top down, right? So you wanna set the screw located on the top of the carburetor clockwise with a screwdriver to increase the flow of oil. Make sure when you turn the screw, it's only a quarter of a turn at a time. Anytime you make adjustments on either uh, the low flame or the high flame screws, make sure you wait 10 to 15 minutes uh, for it to stabilize, right? Because the carburetor or the regulator is gonna change the flow of oil uh, to the stove and you're, there's gonna be a delay from the oil tank to your carburetor as well. So give it time. That was the mistake I made, is I was turning those screws, waiting maybe 10, 20 seconds. I wasn't happy with the flame. I cranked it up even more. And suddenly my, my minimum, when I was focusing on that number one setting, which we're still at, right? My flame was going all over the place, right? So I had a hard time to have a reference point. So make sure if you have nowhere to start, just put that screw all the way in, you know, counterclockwise, and then slowly adjust it clockwise. The ideal flame you want, it should be blue with occasional yellow tips. If you've reached that for the minimum setting, that means you're good to go. And now you can uh, do your adjustments for the max setting or the max flame setting. So similarly to the minimum setting, you wanna gradually turn the uh, control knob to uh, number six, so the highest setting, right? So with the numbers, let it run for a few moments. I would say 10 minutes. Make sure everything's stabilized, right? So if the flame is too low, the oil flow rate should be increased by now turning this max flame screw. Again, clockwise to increase the flow. The flame should have only occasional contact with the burner ring. So the bottom two inches of the flame should be blue in color with the rest yellow. Okay, so that means you have a nice max flame throwing out a lot of heat. Just to summarize, start with the minimum setting, turn it to one. Make sure you adjust the minimum flame. Once you're happy with it, slowly turn the dial up to six and then do the same thing. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about maintenance. So these regulators or carburetors, um, you know, they can run for years and years and years. But the main thing I would say is cleaning out the filter. And we're gonna do that once a year. 
So how do you do that safely? Well, you want to set the control knob to zero. Turn it all the way off. Be safe, turn the oil supply off as well. Uh, you should have a, a shut off valve coming out of your oil tank and raise the arming lever. Uh, again, when you raise it, it shuts off the flow to the carburetor or regulator. Place a container under the carburetor to contain any spillage uh, because now we remove the filter plug, which is held on with those two flats. Pull out the filter and clean it in oil using a soft brush. So you can buy these Teflon brushes. Um, I'll try and put a link in the description below. You never want to use a wire brush. Uh, this filter is typically metal. Uh, some could be kind of like a plastic material. Most are metal, so if you use a metal brush on a metal filter, uh, you tend to, uh, rip, to, to rip it, and that's when you get foreign objects going through your regulator, causing obstructions and just plugging everything up. Uh, once you're happy with it and it's clean, just put the filter back in and the plate with the screws. You can also clean all the enameled stove panels and the outside of the glass using a slightly damp cloth. Uh, make sure you never clean the stove when it's hot. It's just dangerous and you can cause more damage and more of a mess. So I hope this video helped. I could not find any videos on these, so that's why I decided to uh, create my first video on it. If it helped, please, please, please uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notified when I put out other videos. If you have questions, comments, or anything else, just put them in the comments below. I reply to every single comment. If you want to see other videos on stoves or anything, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to make one. Until next time, stay safe.